Hi, I'm Gray. Welcome to Look and Learn. Today we're in the art garden and we'll be reading Dancing Through Fields of Color, the story of Helen Frankenthaler. Inspired by the current exhibition, Piercing the Inner Wall, the Art of Dusty Manche. After we finish this story, I'm gonna take you through the galleries and then we'll do an art activity. Dancing Through Fields of Color by Elizabeth Brown. Illustrations by Ami Sekiro. The story of Helen Frankenthaler. At a time when girls were taught to sit still, learn their manners, and color inside the lines, Helen Frankenthaler colored her reds, blues, and yellows any which way she chose. Helen never wanted to follow the rules. When her mother called her to the dinner table, Helen continued painting watercolors of the sunset shining through the apartment window. Instead of going to bed, Helen filled the sink with water. She dribbled in drops of ruby red nail polish and watched the color flow. When she let the water out, she loved to watch the colors swirl into shapes. During summer vacations, Helen let the waves whoosh and whirl around her, sailing her body through the tides. When her father called her ashore, she wanted to keep circling, twisting, floating, forever wrapped in the blue-green colors of the sea. When her older sisters were in school, Helen spent her days with her mother, who nurtured her dreams. Helen read and wrote stories, made collages, and created designs with glass beads, circles, hearts, and stars, and brilliant colors. She painted pictures and cards for birthdays and anniversaries, filled with all the colors of happiness, purple, yellow, and pink. Helen's father worked long days as a judge. She couldn't wait for him to come home each day. He took her wherever she wanted to go. Most of all, Helen loved taking walks with her family in Central Park. She ran under the welcoming sky, across the lush green fields, and played hide-and-seek among the flowering trees, waltzing, twirling, leaping. When it was time to go, Helen took the colored chalk that she had stuffed in her coat pockets and drew a line from the front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art through the park, across the street, through the crowds, around the corner, all the way home. The colorful line connected the two things she loved most. Helen's parents always encouraged her to blossom, express herself, paint free. In art class at school, Helen wanted to do things her way, but she had to follow the rules in order to pass. Don't sketch that way, draw like this, paint what you see. Helen pleased her teachers when she sketched figures, drew chairs, and painted flowers and pears like all the other students. But she wished for something different. Helen found comfort painting seascapes. The blues and greens reminded her of summer days with her family at the beach. She painted pictures of her trips to the country with bursts of orange gold paints that warmed her face like the sun. Soon, Helen's happiness disappeared entirely. When she was 11, her father died. Helen missed him so much that her sadness caused pounding headaches. She struggled in school. Helen tried painting, but nothing came out. Her canvases remained blank, her world of colors and light dark. But colors lived in her mind, floating and shifting like the shapes she made in childhood. Staring at every color in her paint box, memories came back to her. Periwinkle, the feathery whisper of her father's encouragement. Ochre, the warmth of her father's hand as they strolled in the country. Cobalt and crystal, the summer splashing in the ocean's waves. Helen began to paint again and eventually art healed her. Helen followed the rules well enough to succeed in school and go to college study painting. Her professors wanted colors separated with thick black lines. Her brush marks and planes arranged across the canvas to create depth and space. Helen loved college, but longed to paint what she felt inside. Painting feelings couldn't be contained in black lines or organized into clear shapes or objects. 
Helen dreamed of setting her colors free, like she was as a child, running without boundaries. She searched for more. After college, Helen moved back to New York, where many artists were exploring forms and lines and shapes differently. They overlapped bands of color, thought more about geometry, and painted larger and larger pictures. Helen met an artist named Jackson Pollock, whose paintings hung in museums and galleries. The art world called him the greatest living painter in the United States. Reviewers celebrated him, fans loved him, and when Helen saw his work, she marveled at how he splattered and dripped his paints on the canvas, tacked to the studio floor. If he broke the rules, why couldn't she? Helen exhibited her art in small shows while male painters were given larger exhibits. Critics called Helen's work too sweet in color, too lyrical, and too ladylike. She worked longer and harder at her paintings, drawing strength from her memories of the country and sea. She wanted to leap into her colors, feel the colors, and be the colors. Art never let her down. Helen traveled to Nova Scotia to get away. As she walked through the fields, colors swirled around her. Cerulean blue and coral cascaded down mountains of saffron and gold. Rose, pink, and lavender rippled across the sky. Spring green and vermilion gushed through the sea waves. Helen felt the countryside move within her body. She saw the mountains with her arms. She heard the sea in her wrists. Could she paint the beauty she saw all around her? Could color be the painting? Helen grew brave. Back home in New York, Helen laid a huge canvas on the floor. She put down her brush. Helen blended yellow and red to make orange. Blues and yellows became greens. She mixed and mixed and mixed rainbows. Helen swirled charcoal lines across her canvas to guide her like the chalk lines she drew as a girl in the city. With a fistful of pink, Helen turned her wrist outward and spread the paint, streams of colors racing and spiraling, the paint soaking into the canvas like rain seeping into soil. Helen grabbed a bucket of crimson and poured, setting her colors free. They ran and rushed, The colors turned into memories. Helen imagined the mountain peaks of Nova Scotia with her arms. She remembered the sea's waves with her wrists. With a sweep of her arm, she splashed green like sea foam. Colors jetted across the painting, merged and connected like rivers into oceans, colors into feelings. Wherever the paint landed was the perfect place to be. Grabbing a nearby mop as her partner, Helen promenaded through puddles and pools of paints, pushing and pulling her colors together. Oranges and reds tango, corals pirouetted, pinks plied, yellows and blues sashayed, winding, turning, spinning. When she was done, Helen danced in that field, free among all the shimmering colors of her life, extending, reaching beyond the painting into forever. The end. <laughs>
Hits from 1955. Do you see a sale when you look at this work? For me, when I look at this work, I see the cool blue ocean and tall white masts or sails bending in the wind. Helen Frankenthaler and Dusty Bonjay associated colors with memories and feelings. How do these colors make you feel? Come see this work and many more paintings by Dusty Von Jay on view until May 23rd. Alright, so now we are in the studio at the Mississippi Museum of Art and I'm going to walk you through a watercolor painting tutorial much inspired by Helen Frankenthaler and Dusty Bonjay. So before you start, let's gather our materials. First thing you will need is a heavyweight paper. We like watercolor paper pads. You may want some paint brushes, um, a weird one, but a turkey baster, or maybe an eyedropper or pipette, a spray bottle if you have it, filled with water, some masking tape, a few empty cups, or if it's easier, a muffin tin works really well. If you have watercolor paints at home, these will do liquid watercolors like these. They come in a bottle and they're highly concentrated. Lastly, you may want some paper towels in case things get a little messy, and a drawing utensil. Um, like crayons or oil pastels. Let's get started. Alright, so with your tape, you're going to want to lock down the edges of your paper, like so, on the table, or if you've covered your surface, um, so that when we get this wet, it won't wrinkle. I'm going to draw with red and blue. Now when I'm drawing, I'm going to be thinking about that long chalk line that Helen drew, stretching all the way from the museum and through the park. You can draw whatever you want. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you a couple different techniques. So this first one, I'm going to just wet my paper with my spray bottle. Next thing I'm going to do is mix just a little bit of my liquid watercolors. A little bit goes a long way into my cups. So my different colors here, I've got a violet and a magenta. My last one, I'm going to do a turquoise blue. So now that I have my liquid watercolor in here, I'm just going to add a little bit of water. So now I have really loose paint, right? So using my turkey baster, I'm going to suck just a little bit up into here and then let it flow. You can also do this with paintbrush. So let me show you that technique. So with my paintbrush, and my palette paints that I have. I'm going to load up my brush with water and really saturate it. Paint. So anywhere I've added water to my surface should really start to make this paint move. Remember that when you're painting, the more water you use, the more the paint will flow and twist and twirl. 
like Helen's did. Think about the different ways that you can move your arms and wrist, like Dusty Bunge. In that painting, we did big, large gestures. Can you do that on your paper? So as you paint, think about the colors that you choose. What do these colors remind you of? What do they mean to you? For me, yellow is a really happy color. Blue reminds me of the oceans. Green reminds me of springtime and growth. Now when you're happy with the way that your painting has turned out, stop and let it dry. Thank you guys so much for joining me today in Look and Learn. Make sure to tune in every month for more programs like this.